Morning YouTube, it's Trevor here, Summit and Nothing. I'm in the kitchen today, planning one of my adventures that I intend to get on with as soon as these restrictions are lifted. You may have seen my Dartmoor video the other day where I managed to reach Dartmoor from my door. But in that video I mentioned that my first plan of action once the restrictions are lifted is I'm going to walk across Dartmoor from south to north. I was going to do north to south but I thought I'd do, because I'm situated at the north, I'll get dropped off at the south and walk all the way home. If you're new to Summit or Nothing or you want to follow in my adventures, I'm going to be uploading a few of these videos where I'm discussing this route, how I'll get it onto View Ranger and how do I get that from the computer onto my phone, looking at the Dartmoor camping map and the government range area, firing times, going through my bag, what, what kit I'm going to be taking. So if you haven't already, now is the time to hit that subscribe button and keep up to date with this particular adventure or look back across many of our other adventures. So I've been looking at my route and I was just going to sort of talk you through how I chose my locations I'm going to be going through, other aspects that I've got to take into consideration along the way. So let's have a look down here now. First place I looked to start obviously is down here at Ivy Bridge. So I can get dropped off anywhere in Ivy Bridge here and then pick up the two moors way, which then edges up the hill onto the side of Western Beacon, which is Dartmoor's most southern point. Nathan and I have been here. We've sort of done this area here before. This is the furthest we've been on this area. We've been between Sharp Tour and Western Beacon, took in all this for an afternoon. So this will all be sort of new to me going up here. The Two Moors Way sort of weaves in and around all the way along here over Harford and Uffborough Moor. But there's another footpath that sort of tracks along in more of a straight line. So it makes no odds whether I stick to the road or take that straight line. But this will be passing Butterdon Hill, Uffborough Beacon over there, Hangshell Rock where Nathan and I have camped before, over Piles Hill, past Sharp Tor. Then just follow the Two Moors Way all the way up to the marker stone on Brown Heath. And that's where the Two Moors Way meets the Abbot's Way. Right, you might be looking at that map, seeing all this pen all over it, and think, thinking, why have you drawn all over it with pen? But it is, it's one of the waterproof maps, so I can wash it off. But what I did notice is that the pencil wasn't really marking on there very well. If it rains, that pen will run off. So I'm also going to put this route onto my view ranger and I'll talk you through that in another video. What I'm also gonna do is take a notepad with me and just have all the key locations that I'm heading to on the notepad so that if I do lose the marks, if I haven't got any signal, I've still got an itinerary of where I need to go. So that bit was fairly obvious to work out and to suss out because obviously you can see there's quite a defined track. But it was the next area that I was sort of I'm not stressing them out, but I've come up with a route, but I'll discuss where I was going to go first. At first I thought once we hit this road, I was going to head west, back along the Abbot's Way, and make my way past Nun's Cross Farm. We've done this walk here before, this figure of eight walk, just off of Sheep's Tour. We camped at Gutter Tour nearby here. The Abbot's Way was going to attach to the top of that walk. Then I was going to follow this wall up to South Hessery Tor, cut across just under Prince Town, make my way over to King's Tor, and then we're up into the Merivale area, which is an area you know I know quite well. And then from Merivale, I was going to cross over to here to sort of underside Middle Staple and Great Staple. I was going to go up to Great Staple Tor, over to Ruse Tor, then we flip in there. And I was going to make my way over to these cairns, back out and around to White Tor, which is another walk that Nathan and I have done in this area. But this is where my plan sort of faltered a little, and I started to reconsider because it's getting into an area now where there's a lot of walls and divisions here, and there's no real defined paths. There's a lot of water, there's a lot of steep areas. This area of the moor is not as pleasant. It's a little bit more remote. 
and it was getting a bit vast and a bit sort of confusing. So I thought, right, I've done this area anyway. What I haven't done is over this side of the moor, quite a good area here that I haven't investigated. So I thought, right, let's stop that, go back to that crossway and start again. So now we've flipped over the map again, come back to this point. I know I can get to there to there, that's the easy bit, as I've said. So then I recalled the last year I had joined a walk, but I didn't get to do it, where they was going to walk from north to south on Dartmoor. Even though I'd registered for it, didn't get to do it in the end, but I had the walk downloaded onto ViewRanger. So I thought, ah, that's a good idea. Let's get my ViewRanger app out. So I've got ViewRanger out, had a look across the walk, and they actually go the opposite way across. So I thought, right, I use that as a basis to help get me across. So they follow them two moors way to the right, and they sort of take it up to this boundary line here, just under Pooper's Hill. There's sort of like five lanes meet here, and then they carve off up northwest over Snowdon, which I've not seen. I've not seen any of this area, so this is all new to me. Snowdon, Riders Hill, then over Holm Ridge, and from here now we start carving up towards Coombstone Tor, where we just sort of hit a road, a little bit of a B road there, for a little while, then get back up onto the moors. We head up for a footpath. I mean, it's all built up a little bit here. There's farmland and fields around here, but there's a clearly defined footpath goes through the whole lot of it. It's just next to dark meat, but we're heading on here. This is the dark meat two bridges road. Um, and from here, we're sort of heading up northwest again, back over to another area that we've looked at, Laughter Tour and Belliver Tour. Okay, so now, turn it over again. That's, that's one half of the map covered and done. So possibly day one, which draws up a whole other set of questions. As I've checked the camping map around this area, and this, all this area here, is not very good for camping so it's either going to be a bit of a legal stealth camping which is not recommended or i'm going to have to walk further into the moor so i mean all this area here i think was pretty much non-camping as well but i'll have a look closer look at that anyway i'll just talk you through the rest of my route that i've planned um because i could even camp lower we'll talk about the camping later so now we've got to this point we're up to bellevator from bellevator we're going to head up through Belliver Forest, following this track over Lakehead Hill, and then we up and we hit the B3212, which we just stick on for about 200 metres for carving up another footpath in and around here up to Heartland Tor. From Heartland Tor, then we're going to just head north basically along this bridle way up to the Grey Weathers. Now, I've not been to Grey Weathers. Donna has walked this area with uh, Gemma. You might have seen that video. Me and Nathan haven't done this. The closest we've been here is White Ridge, but we're gonna go up to the Grey Weathers. Then it's west over Sitterford Tor, following this wall in over Little Virigum, crossing the river. And now we're going into the danger zone, the Oakhampton Range area. So that's the first range we're going to hit. We're only going to enter Oakhampton, so it's a big range, but that's the only area which is a danger zone that we're going to hit. So I need to check that before I leave, make sure there's no firing practice on the days that I choose to do my walk. And that's easy enough to check. Go online, just type in Oakhampton range firing times, and then it will take you to the Dartmoor government page. And you can see there the days they got for training. So anyway, now we're into home, the home stretch now, really. And, but like I say, I haven't actually seen any of this. So this area here is all new to me. So that's great. So we're basically following a little footpath over to Whitehorse Hill. Then there's a memorial stone and a peat path. Now this area does look quite boggy, quite marshy. It does say there's a footpath, but you never know with this sort of area. It could be indistinguishable could be wet 
so you've always got to bear in mind that you might end up having to sort of take a, a bypass route up past Watton Tour is a good tour I've heard anyway I've not seen Watton Tour before but we're going to go Whitehorse Hill over to Hanging Stone Hill and then we're following this footpath up now onto the Oakman area so we cut across this ford so now we're on to the home stretch we know all these tracks there's Oaky Tour over here this is where the route differs from what the guided walk that I had on View Ranger goes over Oak Tour but I'm going to come back through the route I know in between Rail Tour and then I'm on my homeward stretch and I can walk from there straight to my front door so that's that's basically an overview of the walk so in the next video we're going to look at the camping map once we've got an idea of where we're allowed to camp then we can break it up into the two days if there's going to be too much trouble finding somewhere to camp on the way home then there might be a few variations but we've got time to look at it and then i'll have a run through putting it into view ranger getting it from view ranger and onto your phone there you go look forward to discussing more of this in future videos cheers